Hello, welcome. If you're a Christian, a follow a follower of Jesus, what does distinctive daily discipleship look like for you today, particularly in isolation? Yours and my daily routines have changed, but what hasn't changed is our need to internally process some of our thoughts and our feelings and how we do that is really really important it's a puzzle who would have thought that life in isolation would be so busy and feel so cluttered i'm a little bit surprised because i like doing new things and having new adventures but even i've been sort of struggling to work out what that might look like we're 10 days into isolation, a couple of our family have not been very well. I don't want to over-exaggerate this, they're, they're better now, uh, so we want to thank God for that. And um, It was wonderful yesterday to get a bit of uh, normality back into the staff routine. We met for morning prayer using Zoom yesterday. I think it worked really well. I think everyone was grateful just to get together to pray. And then after that, we have our staff meeting and uh, on Mondays, we normally have a time of celebration where we focus on the things that God has been doing during the week that help us to identify uh, where we've seen our church purpose and our values embodied. And yesterday, there was lots and lots of stuff. Uh, to my shame, I was a little bit surprised. I thought most people would just be coping with life, but they were getting on with work as well around our children's work and our youth work and our pastoral care teams and small groups. There's lots of new initiatives and, and our team embracing uh, the new technology and uh, working really, really well in isolation. There was uh, one sobering comment from one of our most respected and senior members of the team um, who has to um, be isolated for a long period of time. And there was a uh, a dawning, he had much to celebrate, but a dawning that this could be for up to six months and what that meant in terms of him being able to reach out to family and to cuddle his grandchildren. I suppose all of us have having to process these sorts of thoughts and feelings and come up with different ways of being in order to be able to sustain ourselves for the long haul. How that leaves the sort of begs the question, how do we live as healthy, distinctive daily disciples of Jesus? How do we look after our bodies, our minds and our spirits? Well, uh, in terms of body, I used to do a little bit of exercise. I think I fooled myself that I did more swimming and cycling than I imagined. I've got a bike and I've got some swimming trunks, but that doesn't actually get me swimming or cycling. Um, but I do a bit of exercise from time to time. And um, the class has been brought into my home during Zoom, uh, using Zoom. What I wasn't expecting is um, to be spied upon. One of my sons crept round at the outside of my study window and filmed me doing this. Uh, there's a problem there uh, because he's going to use it as a tool probably sometime in future to blackmail me. I wasn't looking particularly elegant doing some of the exercises. In terms of, I don't know what that's going to look like for you, but I think doing physical stuff matters. In terms of mind, there's lots of good advice out there. I think we're a lot more aware of our mental well-being than we ever used to be but exercise features very highly on that so to drinking water thinking and talking about our feelings um taking a break chatting to friends and not being embarrassed to ask for help and there's other hot tips out there as well that i commend to you we've got to look after our mental well-being but how about our spiritual well-being? I wonder if any of our colleagues or friends or neighbours are asking this question too. You see, God's waiting for us to involve him, 
whether we're in the habit of engaging with him on a regular basis or not, Christian or non-Christian. Some of us just take God for granted or don't know whether he exists. The most helpful thing for me is to remind myself of God's presence with me on a daily basis. But not just it's not just a one off thing. It's an ongoing thing. And I call upon him regularly for inspiration. I do so in the confidence that he is a good God and he wants the best for me and he wants the best for others too. And that he listens when I pray, when I speak to him, but longs that uh, I get better, you too, at listening to him when he tries to communicate with us. Philippians chapter four has been one of my regular go to passages over the years. It reads Philippians four, verse four, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And then a reminder that the Lord is near. And the focus here is on God and not on ourselves. When we think about who he is, who he was, who he will be, there's loads to rejoice about. And then it goes on. Familiar words. Verse six. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And here's the promise. That the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then the, this section concludes and reminds us it's all about choices and about what we choose to focus on. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. How are you looking after yourself, body, mind and spirit? How can you, how can I establish some more healthy disciplines that will sustain me and you in the long term? Please take a few moments now, not to rush away, but firstly to celebrate what God is doing in your life and the life of others, but also to think about what might help to sustain you in the weeks and months ahead. It might help to, to speak to someone about it. If you're in a small group, a small group member, it could be a family member, it could be a friend. But please, please don't be embarrassed to get in touch with me or another member of the staff team if you think that would help. May the Lord's peace go with you.